Let's make a fun Christmas memory. Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. I'm making this for Christmas, but really it is any season, any reason, anyone. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel, friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate all of you who love this wonderful paper crafting community and you come to the channel with a spirit of support, positivity, and enthusiasm. Thank you so much. Today, we're going to make a fun Christmas memory, but like I said in the opener, this can be easily converted to any season, any reason, anyone. Like so many of the crafts that I do, change out your paper and embellishments and make it fit what you need for it to fit. What we're making today is this, and the inside holds the Christmas memory. So I'm going to flip to my overhead camera, give you a closer look at what I'm talking about, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here is what we're going to be making today. When finished, this is going to measure four and a half by six and a quarter, and it will be one inch deep. And this is something that you can very easily make to send to someone in the mail in the place of a Christmas card. Because instead of the typical Christmas card, you can make this as a replacement and you can also include a treasured memory that the two of you shared. I'm going to go ahead and open this so that you can see what it is that I'm talking about. What we have over here is a place for a three by five photograph. You can make yours whatever size you like. Then what we have over here is a nice little flip and we have a place where we can write a message or you can add another photograph and then right here we have a nice little pocket where you can tuck in a gift card you can tuck in some inspirational ephemera or you might even want to put a personalized note in here but y'all this is so stinking cute it is so easy to make and it is so inexpensive to make so if you're going to the store to buy a card why not just sit down and make something like this. I also think that something like this is definitely an eye catcher on your craft fair table because we all have friends and family who might be in another state, might live alone, kids might be off at college, grandkids might be off at college, and you might just want to send them something to cheer them up. This is something that can very easily sit on a mantle, on a tabletop, on a desktop. Just a great little piece of warmth. So, I'm going to show you just how easy it is for us to make this right now. So here's what we're going to need. I am going to be using some of these chipboard pieces from Echo Park and it's from the Christmas Magic Collection. I like that it has these frames in it. That is how I was able to get the frame for over here. And I don't know if you can tell, but I do have a piece of acetate on the inside. And I added the acetate just so that I can make sure that my paper size would fit but then I thought, oh, I like this too, so we're going to leave it. We do have these chipboard frames, and we also have some chipboard sayings that go inside of the frames. Then I have some chipboard pieces. I have two pieces that are cut at four and a half by six and a quarter, and one piece that is cut at one by six and a quarter. Then I have an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of white paper. We will cut this down. And I have a decorative piece of 12 by 12. We'll cut this down. This is a light to medium weight scrapbook paper. Then I have a piece of light to medium weight scrapbook paper in a solid red, and we'll be cutting that as well. And I am going to show you how I cut my chipboard. Even though I've already cut the chipboard, I get this question a lot. So I am going to show you how I actually cut my chipboard. So when I'm cutting single sheets of chipboard, I don't use my electronic paper cutter. The electronic paper cutter that I have is from a company called Vivor, V-E-V-O-R. And that paper cutter, absolutely love it. I think it is one of the best heavyweight tools that I have in my crafting studio. I use it every week, sometimes every day. And y'all, it is a true workhorse. But if you don't have an electronic paper cutter, here is how I cut my chipboard when I'm cutting onesie twosies. So my blades, I mark them. Whenever I have a blade that I've used over and over and the blade is somewhat dull, that is what I use to cut single sheets of chipboard. So all I'm going to do is take this 
And I'm not going to cut this to match the measurements that we need for today's project. I'm just showing you how I cut the chipboard. So I'm just going to take this and cut. So when I cut, I'm not cutting through because the blade is dull, but I am cutting enough so that I can break the board. And then once I've done that, I'll take a blade, my finger blade, you can use an X-Acto knife if you want, but I just go through making passes until I have cut through the chipboard. I found that this is an easier way to do a single sheet or a couple of sheets because by pre-cutting it with that blade, it reduces the amount of pressure that I might have to put on my hand if I was just cold cutting this with a ruler and my finger blade. So that is how I cut those single sheets of chipboard for those of you who might be interested. So let's take our 12 by 12 inch piece and let's take that chipboard. Now my paper is double sided and I want this to be the outside. So I'm going to take these pieces and when I put them down, I'm going to put them down like this with about an eighth of an inch in spacing in between. So let's just go ahead and peel away our tape backers. Now that the backers have been removed, I am just going to take this, place it down like this. We'll take this piece, place it down right here with about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And then we'll take this piece and place it right here with about an eighth of an inch in spacing in between. So what I normally do when I am placing down my pieces is I try to have at least a half inch border going around. Ideally, I like to have a one inch border, but as long as I have a half inch border, I can make it work. I've even made it work with a quarter of an inch border, but the more border you have, the easier the fold over is going to be. So now I'm just going to remove some of my excess paper. And now I'll take my stylus, press it against the chipboard, and just go around and score. Now what this is doing for me is it's giving me the score line that I need to be able to fold over my paper, but it's also helping to break the fibers just a little bit. So if you do have paper that might be prone to cracking, this might help just a little bit. I can't say that it's going to stop that paper from cracking, but it might help to minimize the severity of the cracking. So now we can take this and let's just stand it up and fold it over and get it ready to be folded over permanently. So now I'm going to take my finger blade and I'm just going to miter my ends. And when I miter, all I'm doing is there is that corner. I want to be able to fold over this way and fold over this way without any chipboard showing. So basically I leave a small space between this and this corner here. So now I'm just going to flip over and make sure I have that nice and stuck. So now we can take our snail tape runner and we can use the snail tape runner on this part because these fold over pieces will be sandwiched between the chipboard and the actual liner piece. So once you have them folded over, they are not going anywhere. So let's just go ahead and fold over. And let's get this stuff. And so now we have this piece. If you find that you have any pointies Go ahead and tap those corners into your desk or your tabletop, and it'll help to get rid of those. So now we need to figure out the sizing for the inside liner piece, and I like to reduce my measurements by a quarter of an inch. So right here we have 10 and 3 eighths. I'm going to reduce it to 10 and 1 eighth. 
same thing over here. Here at six and a quarter, I'm going to reduce it to six. So we'll have 10 and one eighth by six. So I'm going to bring in my eight and a half by 11 inch piece and we're going to cut at six by 10 and one eighth because this is our liner. So now we'll be able to take this piece and put it down like this. But before I do, I want to go ahead and place some tape on the inside like this. So I'm going to cover the exposed chipboard with tape. And now I'll take my tape and I'll place tape around all four sides of this inside liner piece and we'll be ready to join the two pieces together. All right, so now we're just going to peel away the tape backers from both pieces and we will join these together. All right, so let's take this and let's just put it down like this. Go ahead and get that nice and stuck. Then let's work our spine, making sure that we have it nice, crisp, and defined. Do the same thing over here. Now I'm going to stand it up and just Wear this off a little bit, giving it that professional look. And so now we have our folio. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the chipboard pieces. And this time I want to use the snowflakes. I am just going to remove all of these interior pieces and we're going to take this and we're going to put it right here and to hold this in place so that you can place a photograph behind it I am going to use my pop dots but I want to cut them in half because I don't want them to be as wide as they are because I need them to sit along the edge like this so all I'm going to do I am just going to take these and I'm not going to separate them. I am just going to put them along the edge like this. Then I'll take the other strip and I want them close to the edge. And then I'm just going to place these along the bottom because they came unraveled, but that'll be okay. We just want to get some down. And then I'm going to place one right here in the corner. And then I'm going to press them all into place. And we're going to remove all of the backers. So let me do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my pop dots on the back. I have way more on here than I need but I just didn't feel like separating them. So I put them down in the lines that I cut. So I'm just going to take this and we'll put it down like this. And now when we place a photograph, we can stick the photograph in at the top and it won't come out because those pop dots that we put in are holding it in at the bottom. So we have that piece in and already this is elevating the look of this. So now we're going to cut our inside piece. Let's bring in that red 12 by 12 and we need to cut a piece that is 6 by 12. So on the 12 inch side, let's score at 3 and 7 eighths. Then we're going to score at 4 and 7 eighths and then at 10 and a half. And so now we can just fold and burnish 
all of our scores. And when you get to this smaller score here, fold it backwards and do your folding that way. So now I'm just going to take some of my snail tape runner, add some tape to this piece, fold it over and stick it down. Then we'll take some glue, add some glue to the edge and we'll fold this to get that pocket. And then I have a scrap piece of white paper and this measures five and three quarters by three and a half. And I am just going to add some tape to the back. And we'll put this piece right there. So now we have our sweet little booklet. We have that pocket right there. We're going to take this piece and we're going to put it in like this. Or if you want, you can put it in so that it opens like this. And this time I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take my glue, add some glue. Take this piece and we're going to put it down like this. Let's get it nice and stuck. And so now really all we need to do is decorate. I am going to take some of this, the border strip, and we're going to place that right there so that we can break up that pocket just a little bit. Then I'm going to take some of my little snowflakes, put one right in the corner, and put one in this corner. Really kind of ties it all in. I'm going to take one of my ornaments and let's put it right there. So then we have this piece. I'm going to fold over so that we can work on the front. So then for this piece, I think I'm just going to use this because I like how it looks. So I have added some glue to the back. I'm going to put it down right there. Then we'll take this little piece here add our glue and we're going to put it right there on the inside. Let's get that stuck. So now we have this piece. When you open it we have this and then we'll take this frame, add some glue and we're going to place it down like this. And then I have this one that says it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue along the edges. And we'll take it get it stuck like this. And then here on the inside I want to add this little piece right there that says Christmas greeting. So I am just going to add some glue. I'll take this piece and put it right there. And y'all, there we have another beautiful way to share a Christmas memory. So we can open it. We have our place to write. We have the pocket right here where we can put in a gift card. We can put in some sentimental ephemera or a personalized note. Then over here, we can add a photograph. And because this is larger, the photograph size is approximately four by five and a half. 
So we would fold it like this and then close it. And this is what we have. And like I said, this can very easily just sit out on a mantel top. It can sit out on a desk, tabletop, wherever you want to put it. But y'all, I think that these are just so stinking cute. I have brought that first one back in so that you can see just how stunning these are and how eye-catching they actually are. So if you're looking for an alternative to sending a greeting card at Christmas time, why not consider something like this? Just find a nice small shipping box and I think the person that you send it to would be delighted to have it. So I hope that you have enjoyed this super, super sweet way to share a Christmas memory or any memory. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, all day, every day, this is what we do and this is how we do it. I'd love to have you subscribe, so hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload a new video. As always, my friends, please be safe, be kind, and be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.